So we, we kind of left off with um, Warhol, and in the mix there, um, with him and talking about abstract expressionism and Jackson Pollock, and we started to bring up this term, uh, performance art, and I had you guys do a performative drawing assignment, and so uh, I wanted to give that uh, some context in terms of its uh, emergence and, and um, formation as a medium. Uh, so this is uh, mid-60s, early 70s we're looking at mostly, but this is a slide presentation a visiting artist put together for our program. Um, her name's Stoney uh, Sasser, so you know. So I, I kind of appropriated the um, presentation and added some things to it, so I'll be using it as a format. Um, we're starting with uh, this notion or this idea of thinking of the body as this object that could be manipulated as a, a material. So uh, this is an artist named Bruce Nauman, and this is uh, early in his career. He says, they're all human activities, no matter how limited, strange, and pointless, they're worthy of being carefully examined. And so what you're seeing on the right here is a series of videos, early video and film. Um, he's using film and video, but early video where he's uh, making artworks in his studio of um, him moving around his studio and investigating ways to use the notion of artist in studio as a form to manipulate or as the subject matter itself. So, so thinking about those definitions of art, um, maybe one of those things to examine is the production of art and where or the site uh, that making happens and how how do you capture that? And so this is called Bruce Nauman manipulating uh, T-Bar 1966 and This is a film and He's gonna be um, in that vein of kind of early conceptual art uh, Being very literal and so this is it's pretty boring and banal, but it's it is the um, literal manipulation or movement or iterations of moving a T-bar. And so what you're looking at is him in his studio, and there's a, a metal T-bar uh, laying on the ground. And um, as the video progresses or film progresses, you see him literally uh, manipulating that. Okay, well, let me get to this. Let me jump to where I can. So it's what it literally sounds like is he's tapping it, or these are, these are um, different objects that he's tapping. Ah, that jumps around too much. Let me see if I can exit here so you can actually see this a little better. And so if I'm playing this video and coming here, he's lifting the T-bar and just moving its position in space. And so again, I know this sounds, seems strange and boring and banal, but what he's teasing out is this notion that um, everything's worth uh, some form of analysis. And so this analyzing of the T-bar um, and its manipulation isn't just in any space or any site. It's the investigation itself that's happening in the studio that is uh, something he's pointing to. And he's seeing that as something that happens over time. And so this record keeping or the filming of it is, um, in his mind, this uh, type of record or uh, video of a performance happening. This is an artist named Vito Acconci. Uh, this is uh, uh, a good way of segmenting or, or getting into this notion of self-reflection and thinking about uh, the way in which artists start to uh, point to 
the lack of uh, um, objectivity in viewing art and that you that kind of non-neutrality that we've been talking about these are those conversations where um, the viewer is coming to uh, an artwork and is being interrogated as someone who's viewing the artwork and so um, Vito Conchi is someone who's thinking about the viewer as a voyeur um, and this uh, is specifically uh, significant because of the political climate of the 60s and 70s because there's a lot of uh, people voicing and protesting uh, complicity right and and that you don't uh, get to be neutral when you consume things and so in images and art and the consumption of culture um, in the consumption you're complicit in what it is that you're um, helping produce and so he does uh, a series of videos early on, this one uh, called Undertone. Now these are, these are unsettling, so, um, but on purpose he's trying to um, interrogate our lack of neutrality. And so in this video I'd like you to watch it, um, unfortunately in, in this I can't I can't give you the sound right now but what he's saying is um, you know I, I I think you know what I'm doing with my hands under the table or um, I wish you were under the table with me or there's someone under the table here um, and and he's intentionally framing the video in a way that restricts your ab ability to view what's going on in the table um, which which looks like uh, something lewd or something is um, he's sexualizing the content as a way of asking do you trust what I'm saying and do you trust the images that and representations um, that the artists are putting forward as truth and so he's he's uh, teasing out how we consume media and often trust things without having this kind of broader context of what lies beyond the frame or what are the intentions of the artist and so on and so forth. Here um, is uh, one, one of the more extreme um, approaches uh, to this idea of the, the body as an object, but this is an artist named Chris Burton was really interested in um, the time period and how the body gets um, utilized as an object in very violent means. So he says, I have an intuitive sense that being shot is an American, is as American as apple pie. We see people on uh, being shot on TV. We read about it in the newspaper. Everybody has wondered what it's like. So I did it. Um, what you're seeing on the right here is uh, the artist literally crucifying himself to a VW bug and so and and that's literal like he put uh, drove uh, spikes or nails through his hands to the VW bug this is a video oh it looks like it got uh, nixed we'll have to find that I'll have to embed um, another version but this is a video of Chris Burton uh, in early in his career for a opening at a gallery exhibition um, having a friend who's a sharpshooter um, in the in the gallery in front of a live audience um, he has the sharpshooter shoot him in the arm uh, from a, a short distance and this is a video that uh, is a document of the sound of that happening and the the aftermath and so him walking after being shot um, this also starts to become, and as you've noticed, there's been a lot of um, men represented in this discussion so far, and we start to see the emergence and shift of um, uh, a voice that's absent often, which is, uh, in this case, women. Um, a broad, broadly, women are uh, excluded from having voice uh, in many uh, aspects of culture at this time, but uh, specifically in art. So we see um, 
the emergence of this in uh, performance art specifically, and it's being categorized and seen as feminist in nature, uh, so the content is feminist in nature. So we see a few main tendencies in this type of work that we'll, we'll look at, but the three are autobiographical or narrative in uh, take, uh, mystical or ritualistic, and also the political. Uh, this allowed women to communicate urgent messages about life experiences, emotions, and the conditions of being a woman. So uh, Faith Wilding is an artist who emerges at this time um, and is still currently working and, and exhibits um, internationally and, and in Chicago. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, I saw her lecture and um, present work. So she's still very active. Um, this uh, work we're going to see a little bit of called Woman House Woman, uh, Women's Performing Arts Program by Judy Chicago and Miriam Shapiro. Um, don't worry about that. Uh, we're not going to go too in depth into that. But uh, in general, this idea of challenging the idea of the male gaze, the way we have talked about it already with John Berger. Uh, um, this is a video called uh, of a. Uh, performance called Woman House from 1974 and what you'll um, witness when you uh, hear the video being played is um, this evolution of her uh, waiting and talking about waiting and waiting to become um, uh, a woman and, and what that entails and often it's in reference to someone else's idea of what uh, that should be. This is uh, Car Carly Schneeman, um, this kind of ritualistic and sensual approach um, to the topic of uh, feminist performance art. Um, she, in this performance, um, has a scroll that's um, um, tethered or uh, uh, wound up and and she's uh, through the performance pulling that out of her vagina and and that scroll is um, talking about and exercising the idea of uh, the ritual of uh, a menstrual cycle and being a woman in this culture um, and how uh, taboo those uh, topics are and so that's it's um, uh, an expression of, an, and I would say political expression as well, of that, uh, the lack of attention and voice and, and um, willingness to um, breach some of those topics. Uh, that video got mixed as well. These, these unfortunately, some of these videos can be semi-graphic and challenging, and so they, they often get bumped from YouTube, but it, um, I'm going to skip through this and uh, jump to uh, Janine Antony, uh, who would be more um, uh, someone who's contemporary work in current day with a lot of these same themes. Um, this is a work of hers where she says, I mop the floor with my hair. The reasons I'm so interested in uh, taking my body to, these, to those extreme places is that uh, that's a place where I learn, where I feel most in my body. I'm really interested in the repetition, the discipline, and what happens to me psychologically when I put my body to that extreme place. Uh, she, she would be someone, if you want to investigate deeper, I would look into Janine Antony's work. Uh, it's very well recognized for um, the kind of complex approach to material and medium and performance and an object. She does a really nice job. Um, and then we talked a little bit about Marina Abramovich. This is um, a, a collaborative work early on. She worked collaboratively with a gentleman named Ule, and they, they would do a series of performances. And this one, um, they're both standing at the entrance, um, completely nude to an exhibition space. And if you wanted to come into that exhibit, you had to walk between them and you had to choose uh, which direction you were going to face because the, the narrowness of that entry um, dictated that you couldn't walk um, straight on. This is a 
pivotal piece uh, in in 1974 called Rhythm O by Maria Marina Abramovich, where she in a gallery she set up a performance space and she was kind of challenging some of the criticism of performance at this time, uh, specifically the nature of it being um, kind of self-absorbed or showboating or or nihilistic. And so she uh, set up this table with just a, a series of objects on it and um, kind of innocuous objects all the way up to a knife and uh, a gun with a bullet next to it. And over the course of uh, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., a six hour or 2 a.m., a six hour uh, performance piece, she said literally nothing. She just stood next to the table and over uh, the duration of that uh, period, her clothes were cut off of her body. She was cut multiple times by a knife that was on the table. And eventually she, uh, someone in the audience, uh, loaded uh, the uh, gun and put it to her. Um, and that person, I guess, a fight broke out and um, that person was attacked. And so she was kind of articulating this idea that um, it's not the performance that's the problem, it's the way that it's received. And that that has a lot to do with um, the way this society uh, engenders people, how it um, um, considers the body in terms of male, female, or those kind of binary terms, and uh, how, how we're um, conditioned to uh, treat one another. We talked a little bit about this, the artist is present. I'll let you investigate that too if you want. Now, I'm not, um, I, I didn't go horribly into depth into this topic. It's a really rich and vibrant um, discussion, but as a, a way of dealing with time and dealing with uh, the entirety of the course, I'm going to move on to uh, discussing um, some of the outcomes of the work we've been talking about uh, at the end of the semester in terms of uh, what we see today.